Hey everybody, Barry here again. Yesterday, we got the flange that we needed for the pinion, and today I need to find a U-joint to fit that. So what we have is our Ford truck U-joint flange, or drive shaft side flange, and here's our pinion flange we acquired. So I'm not gonna be using this drive shaft. I'm gonna use a drive shaft that's out of my Chev. It's a steel, like a four inch diameter Chevy drive shaft. And I need a U-joint that's gonna go from this Ford flange to the Chevy drive shaft. And of course, it's not just a regular U-joint, it's gonna be a conversion because the Ford one is wider this way than the Chevy is that way and the cap sizes are different, that kind of thing. So I found the measurements. This is the Chevy side here. 3.2 outside diameter or outside across the spider 1.06 cap diameter here's the forward one is 3.625 across the u-joint and 1.188 outside diameter so to find a part number we sell moog u-joints here so this is the one i'm going to use this is looking up moog u-joints by sizes here's the url if you need it So what we'll do is look up our cap sizes. So we'll put in 1.063 and look down through until we find one with 1.188. Here we go. Here's our 1.063, 1.188. And right here is our cross distance. So I measured 3.22 and 3.62. So right here is 3.218, 3.62. And there are four outside snap rings, which mine are. And the part number is right here, 348. It's a combination of 369 and 331. So this chart is really, really useful for any dimensions. If you're trying to get a conversion U-joint, your sizes are here, and it'll give you the part number right there. And if you need to change it over to a Spicer number, a lot of places have interchange for that. Or Spicer probably has its own website like this. So I just pull the U-joint off the shelf, bring in my drive shaft, and then I can put this flange onto my drive shaft. And easy as that. Here's my drive shaft and the Ford drive shaft. And we can see here why we need a conversion U-joint. This cap here is a lot smaller than this one. This is 1.188. This one is 1.06. And the distances between here to here and this one are also not so great. This one's a lot shorter, 3.22, I think, and 3.6 inches. So what I need to do now is take off this flange. This is Moog 348. That converts a 369 and a 331 U-joint. So I can use different manufacturer's flanges, Chevy, Ford. Let's go ahead and change it. Now, there's lots of ways to do this, but one way I like to loosen up these clips is to get a socket that's just the same size. See how it fits right down into the uh, U-joint cap area there? And just hit it. What that does is loosens up the clip in around the cap because you can see there's a lot of rust here. Hook it in behind the ear. And try and loosen it up. And here we can see, came out in multiple pieces. Doesn't always work perfectly, but sometimes it works okay. This one came out complete. Okay, U-joint is starting to come out to the surface. So that means we know it's moving. It's moving.
can see it's coming out really nice. And it's uh, one of the harder ones I've had to work at, but won't be long. Well, that was a lot of work. We got one cap out. So that should allow us. There we go. Flange is separated. Here we have it. And now for our Chevy drive shaft end. Put your joints in this one, get them out. This is actually a conversion U joint too for the Chevy and a 1965 or 66 nine inch Ford rear end. here we can plainly see the difference the caps in the ford drive shaft flange are way bigger also the length is not a lot but slightly longer so we wouldn't be able to use the u-joint with the same dimensions at each end and here's our moog number 348 conversion u-joint longer on one side than the other also the caps are bigger on the longer side so that's gonna be perfect so first I like to take one cap put it in the drive shaft take our u-joint and put the grease nipple at the back put it in the u-joint here and then press that one in a little further Other cap, lay it in place. You gotta make sure these are lined up really well and make sure the needles don't fall out of place in the U-joint. Because if they do, you won't get it pressed on straight and it could break the needles. So when you get the caps pressed on so much like this, then center the U-joint between them to make sure the pins stay straight and just slide it in further. Mine have welds up here where somebody decided to weld a U-joint in at once. So I'm gonna have to tap it in with a socket. One U-joint is down past the land for the C-clip.
the other side out. And be sure both of your C-clips are seated. Now, sometimes you'll get a U-joint that's kind of tight, like this one is. If it's tight, you could get a vibration because it's resisting the rotating action. So take a hammer and just kind of hit both sides where the yoke is. And a lot of times it'll loosen it right up. Oops. Much better. Now for the rear end flange side. Just repeat all the previous steps. So I tried to put this flange on here and for some reason it just will not go over the second end of the spider here. So I was like, oh, look, I got the wrong U-joint. So I went in and cut the drive shaft off of the old Ford that I got the flange from and looked at it. And we can see here that this one is narrower by probably a quarter inch. The bolt holes line up, but it's a lot narrower, we can see here. So the other dry shaft, this rusty one over here, must be off of some sort of an Explorer or Explorer Sport Track or something. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this one here off. Every time I touch this stuff, I learn something new about how much different stuff there are with Fords. I'm a Chev guy and they're pretty much universal. This Ford stuff is, every year has a different part. So let's get this one taken off the aluminum drive shaft and attempt number two. And again, I still have the wrong U-joint in it because these caps are a lot smaller than the ones that I put into our chef drive shaft. Because this flange has 1.18 caps in it. This one has 1.06 caps in it. So I'm still gonna have to pull it out of this chef drive shaft. And to be honest, I think the one that I had in it beginning in the beginning is the correct one. And it's the same U-joint. So, the one that I had in it first was the one that I had. It actually calls for. Even when you do your homework, look up part numbers. Sometimes, stuff just doesn't work out. But, I not one to hide my mistakes and just pretend like I didn't mess it up. So, here we are. We'll put this U-joint back in the drive shaft. Put the flange on it and be done with all this. Well, a little embarrassing, but that's what happens when you're making up hot rod stuff. So here we have the new U-joint because I don't really want to put this old one back in. I just hammered on it several times to get it out and it probably made 200 passes last year. So I'm not going to put this back in, but here we are. This is part number 353 and on Moog's website, it says it's a Spicer. 1310 to 1330 conversion U-joint. So let's get this put in before I make any more mistakes.
couple attempts, but we finally got it together. Look at this. Nice. Can get out the grease nipple good. Everything looks really good. Really excited to be able to use this flange style now because I'm used to using the Chevy, like the U-bolt straps that go on over and little nuts go on the back. And how many times have I had those loosen up and smash an ear off the oak or stretch and the cap fly out? Oh man, it was state. This is really, really cool. So it took a little bit of work, but I finally got the right U-joint for the drive shaft. I'm trying to find Chevy parts to fit Ford parts and them cooperate sometimes can be a little bit difficult, but we got it and I think it's going to work perfect. So that's going to be it for this video. I would say tomorrow or the next day, I'll get at cleaning up these brackets and clean all this up here. I'm going to try and stomach getting out at the Ford. There's an extra eight or 10 inches of snow on top of it now. So I'm going to see if I can get and haul the rear cover off, pull the ring gear out pull the side axles and the pinion and then I can mock up all this in here get my axle depth correct cut off the tubes and get the nine inch ends ready to mock up see if they're going to slide on over this pipe or if I'm going to have to get them machined but either way we'll get it figured out so thanks for watching everybody have a great night